Hello, my name is Jill Preetz, and I'm a biological anthropologist at Texas State University. And today I was going to talk to you about the chimpanzees that I study in a savanna environment in Senegal. And I'll focus on two major aspects of their behavior and ecology today. One is their tool use, specifically their tools, tool use with hunting, and then also how they deal with this very hot and dry environment, which is a, an area that chimpanzees are not very well studied in today. I am interested in chimpanzees for their own sake in terms of their behavior and ecology, but I'm also interested in what they can tell us about hominin evolution. In other words, what they can tell us about human evolution. So the Fongoli study site is in West Africa. It's one of a number of long-term field studies of chimpanzees, but the Fongoli site is one where chimpanzees live in a very dry, hot, and open environment. Chimpanzees live in these types of environments in both the east and the west of Africa, but they haven't been very well studied there. Jen Goodall and others have studied chimpanzees in East Africa more intensively and for longer. My study site is in southeastern Senegal, and I specifically began this study because I was interested in using chimpanzees as a referential model. In other words, to better understand human evolution or early hominin evolution based on how chimpanzees in this type of environment deal with stresses associated with the savanna. So while you may be familiar with a very forested environment and chimpanzee documentaries, what you see here is more typical of the Fongoli site. So scattered trees, very open areas, and wildfires that burn much of the area annually. This particular photo shows my camp. Another interesting and different aspect about my study is that we don't study chimpanzees in a national park but in an area where they live alongside people. In fact, most non-human primates today are affected by humans to some degree. And so primatologists are beginning to embrace the study of non-human primates in such areas, rather than only limiting our study to national parks and other areas where humans have been excluded. Chimpanzees are one of the large mammals that are still left in this area of southeastern Senegal, whereas lions and some other large predators have been exterminated. But chimpanzees live in open areas like you see here because, in part, humans have taboos against hunting and eating them in southeastern Senegal. So chimpanzees and humans have lived alongside one another for, for millennia in these particular areas, and it is a very seasonal habitat. Humans use the area seasonally to go out and plant their crops, and once the growing season and the harvesting season is over, they move back into rural villages. Chimpanzees are very adept at using their landscape and avoiding humans, especially during the times of year when humans are more likely to be out in the landscape. But by and large, until recently, we didn't see a lot of conflict between humans and chimpanzees in this habitat. I'm interested in not only the behavioral ecology of chimpanzees in a savanna, but also how humans and chimpanzees live alongside one another. But if you look at my question from a really broad standpoint, one major research question that I've always had is, how do chimpanzees in this savanna environment differ from those living in forests? Because most of the studies, almost all of the studies up until fairly recently have been done on chimpanzees that live in a forest. And so what we know about chimpanzees has been generalized initially from studies of the Gombe chimps where Jane Goodall studied and elsewhere in Mahali to now other study sites living, where chimpanzees live in forests However, in these savanna environments, we see behaviors that are different. And those are the behaviors that I'm most interested in. And I'm interested in seeing how great apes like chimpanzees deal with pressures associated with a savanna environment.
in part because, like I mentioned, this type of environment is where early hominins first evolved. And my study, in part, is interested in addressing questions associated with early hominin evolution. So this image gives you an idea, I believe, of the type of environment chimpanzees live in here. A very open habitat. You see some shrubs in the back of this particular slide. This is called a woodland savanna. It's a type of savanna. They have a very large home range. It's a relatively small study group and we have a somewhat skewed sex ratio. They've been studied daily almost from since 2005. I'm going to focus on uh, data over the much of the data from this 12-year study but they are continuously studied up until today with no interruption. One of the things I'm going to talk about is tool use because it's one of the interesting and different aspects of these chimpanzees behavior. Specifically, they use tools to hunt other mammals and that's something that we don't see systematically at other chimpanzee study sites. So this is a common definition used by primatologists as to uh, what tool use is, and that's a very long definition, so I won't read it there. But basically it involves some sort of manipulation and oftentimes modification of a, an object for a purpose like hunting. And that image there shows you a chimpanzee that is using a stick tool that he's fashioned into a spear-like weapon to hunt bush babies. And this is a major primate prey of the chimpanzees that I study. We also have proto-tool use at Fungoli, and you see proto-tool use here. In this slide, it's a female chimpanzee using a rock anvil to open a hard baobab fruit. So it's not exactly the same as tool use because you don't have manipulation or transport of an object, but it is a way of using an external object to access in this example, a uh, highly valued food item, the baobab fruit, which for chimpanzees at the site is one of their top foods. So this is uh, another image of a male chimpanzee that was eating a fruit back to this older female chimpanzee that used the stone anvil to open the fruit. And these foods are hard to access. So for example, young individuals cannot access them and they have to get access to the pulp of this fruit via sharing by older individuals. So this is an example of where tool use is necessary even for older adults at some times of the year in order to gain access to these particular food sources. We're going to move on and talk about hunting with tools because this is one of the main types of tool use at the Fongoli site. And it is a behavior that is relatively rare. It's not seen at chimpanzee study sites elsewhere. I apologize. We're moving on to talk about, first we're going to talk about proto-tool use. Just another example and that has to do with weapon use. This is uh, just an, an image of a leopard at our site, and we have observed chimpanzees using stick weapons to stab at a leopard in a cave, and they ultimately were able to flush a leopard from a cave, <clears throat> and it fled the area. So this, for some people, is considered an example of proto-tool use. It is also considered an example of tool use, but it's, again, using uh, an object, in this case, an, a detached object was used in defense. There's another example here, and this has to do with a snake predator. This is an adult male chimpanzee. I apologize for the camera work. He's throwing stones at a rock python that was detected by another chimpanzee. And so chimps at this site also use stones and sticks, branches, etc., against either potential predators like the rock python or dangerous snakes like venomous puff adders and other vipers. This is something that we see quite commonly at Fongoli where you see uh, apparently a high density of dangerous snakes in this type of savanna woodland. So again, this 
can be considered an example of tool use or proto-tool use if you use a very strict definition of tool use whether where the object is not modified. And it's just another example of using uh, an object as an interface between the individual and their environment. So now I'm going to move on and talk more about tool use at Fungoli. Um, not quite getting to tool use for hunting yet. First I'll show you uh, what is a more common example of tool use. And this is modifying a vine to hunt for termites. So this is an older female at our study site. And she has modified a piece of vine to hunt for termites, to fish for termites specifically, is the terminology we use. So you could see that she pulled the vine out of the termite mound. The termites have latched onto it, the soldier termites. And then she consumes the termites from the twig itself. And this was first described to science by Jane Goodall from Gombe, Tanzania, and it's been, observe, been observed at many other chimpanzee study sites. Not all chimpanzees use tools to fish for termites. Not all chimpanzees eat termites, but at many sites they do use tools to fish for termites. At my particular study site in Senegal, termites are one of their top three foods. So they spend a huge amount of time throughout the year focusing on termites as prey, and they're very high quality food for chimpanzees. They also involve very little energy in terms of their uh, expenditure, expenditure to get at these particular types of food. But the next type of tool use I'll talk about is a type of tool use that has rarely be, been seen at other sites. And that is hunting with tools. So this is just a photo of an adult female who we call Ava who is using a stick tool to hunt galago prey. So galagos are small nocturnal primates that are active at night during the day. They sleep in tree hollows like the one that Ava is jabbing the stick in. And chimpanzees at my Fungoli study site focus on these small primates as their main prey source. Um, Ava's daughter Tessa is observing her behavior and this is also something that we commonly see at the study site when chimpanzees are hunting with tools. This behavior occurs seasonally and it is seen mostly in the rainy season at Fungoli. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this because there have literally only been a handful of such sightings seen elsewhere but we see this behavior very often and regularly at Fongoli. So there is a very specific routine or set of steps that the chimpanzees have when they make this so-called spear tool. On the upper left is a drawing of the Galago prey. On the right lower image you see a number of these stick tools. On the upper right image you see a close-up of the ends of these stick tools because if you read through this process, some of the individuals actually trim the tip of the tool. Not all chimpanzees do this, but some do. Almost all chimpanzees, though, will go through several steps of this process. And they may use several tools at a particular site. They um, may, in fact, capture several bush babies at a particular site. And so now we have hundreds of observations of this particular type of behavior. We've recorded more than 35 different chimpanzees over the years using tools to hunt, and we've recorded over 500 different cases of hunting with tools. One of the other interesting aspects of this particular type of behavior is that unlike chimpanzees at other sites, females are the predominant hunters at Fongoli. Females hunt with tools more than males. Males also hunt with tools. So the image that you see is actually of an adult male chimpanzee using a tool to hunt a galago prey. This was featured in a BBC documentary. 
And when you look at the success rate of males and females, they're both equally good hunters. This particular video shows an adult female chimpanzee, who we call Tumbo, making a tool and she jabs it into a hollow tree in hopes of getting a bush baby. I will say she was not successful. You can see that Tumbo is in estrus. And there's a chimpanzee at the very edge of the your view, and that is her, at the time he was a juvenile, her son, Sai. Again, showing that these youngsters oftentimes observe older individuals as they hunt. So Tumbo has broken her tool. She ultimately pulls it out right there and discards it, and then she goes on to make another tool, which is, again, something that's commonly seen. This particular image was court recorded right after a rain and this is also a time during which we often see chimpanzees hunting with tools is following immediately following a rainstorm tumbo the female shown in this particular image is one of the most successful hunters with tools and she's also one of the females that goes through all of the stages i showed you in the previous slide and she, in addition to sharpening the ends of the tools with her teeth, she removes all of the bark off of tools. And that is something that is not often done by chimpanzee hunters at my study site, but it is something that facilitates stabbing the tool into this craggy hollow tree or branch. So that may be one of the reasons that Tumbo is more successful than other individuals. So in terms of larger hunting patterns at Fongoli, like I said, a lot of females here hunt, and females in fact hunt with tools more often than males when you take into account the number of females in a group, the number of females within a subgroup or party, as we say in chimpanzees. And that is very different from what you see in other chimpanzee groups that have been studied specifically in East Africa. In fact, four of the top 10 hunters at Fongoli are female, and females account for over a third of all the vertebrate prey captured at Fongoli, and about 40% or 43% of all of the Galago captures. And so there's an image of Tumbo when she was a little longer, younger with a Galago prey that she has captured. There's a young female shown on the bottom left that's practicing hunting with tools. And one thing also that I want to point out is that the very top hunter, the most successful hunter at Fongoli, is the oldest and lowest ranking adult male. And the reason that this is of interest, in addition to the fact that females hunt so much, is that um, at other sites, these lower ranking individuals, like females, and like these very low ranking males, are usually not allowed to keep access to the prey that they have hunted. And so this particular slide asks questions that relate to this topic. So females hunt with tools, I believe, at this site because they're allowed to keep the prey that they capture. Whereas at other sites, for example, in East Africa, dominant individuals, especially the alpha male, st steal these prey items from females and from lower ranking males. And at Fongoli, where females are able to hunt and share meat, we do see that females share meat just like males do at other sites. I will say that males at the Fongoli site also share meat, just like chimpanzees do elsewhere. And I do think that this can inform our ideas about early hominin hunting, and specifically when we start thinking about hunting with tools. So hunting with tools and hunting this particular type of prey allows an individual like a female who has a dependent offspring to get access to meat, whereas other types of hunting are the purview of adult males. So just like I said, there's what I call social tolerance in Fongoli, and that allows females to not only hunt, but to keep their prey, so it provides some sort of incentive. And then something that is always, almost always seen, goes hand in hand with hunting of vertebrate prey at chimpanzee study sites is the fact that chimpanzees share meat. And so this is something that we see as well. 
So there are explanations on uh, sort of a more of an ultimate level as to why this might happen. And one is that in the savanna, chimpanzees perhaps may be more cohesive. That's what we see at Fungoli. But one thing that we also see in West African chimpanzees is that you have a more social uh, male and females and males range together <clears throat> and they're more social with one another than they are in East Africa. We just don't have as much information on West African chimpanzees. And then at Fongoli, we have to take into account that we have a skewed sex ratio. So it could be that there's some sort of male mating strategy because we have a lot more males than females. So I'm going to leave hunting for the moment and move on to talk about heat stress. This is something that has also been very heavily studied at the site because chimpanzees here do have to cope with intense heat during much of the year, much higher than you see at these forested sites. And they also have to deal with scarce water availability. So the high heat stress intensifies or exacerbates, exacerbates the scarce water. And so uh, there are a few different ways that chimpanzees deal with this. And one way that they deal with heat stress is that they use caves to cool off in. And so I think I have a video coming up of chimpanzees in a cave. The caves are always cooler than the surrounding areas and they're consistently cool throughout the day and especially during the dry season. So this is a remote camera placed within a cave, a camera trap. So that particular image showed competition between young males over an estrus female, and one basically charged and pushed out another. The estrus female fled before the more dominant male came in. And then what you saw was one subordinate younger adolescent male never left the cave. He wasn't uh, quite important enough to be involved in that fight. But this type of social interaction is something that is not infrequent in caves, but it's hard for us to observe because we try to stay some distance from the chimpanzees, at least 10 meters for a variety of reasons, and we cannot follow them into caves. And so we use camera traps to get at behaviors like this. And this is a behavior, cave use is a behavior seen during the dry season again, and it correlates with very high heat stress. There are other ways that chimpanzees deal with high heat stress in their environment. And again, not only is high heat stress something they have to deal with, but water scarcity. And so this is an example of an adult female chimpanzee digging a well in a dry creek, bread, creek bed. So this is a fungoli stream. And during the rainy season, it has water in it can be quite deep, well, a couple of meters anyway. During the dry season, it dries up completely, but there are certain areas that the chimps can dig, where they can dig down and access the water table, at least at the beginning of the dry season. So that's what this adult female is doing. She's digging down to the water table and then waiting for the water to rise into this small well. Her older son is there on the right, so she just lays down to drink right there. Her older son is on the right, but she had both an infant daughter and a juvenile son that sat there and waited for her to dig the well so that they could also drink in it. And they come to the same place in these creeks year or these small streams year after year. Sometimes they'll also dig these wells next to a pool of water that's stagnant, so it does seem to serve uh, the function of a filter. So during part of the dry season, the chimpanzees can still access water by digging into the stream bed. But at the peak of the dry season, they're restricted to only between three and five permanent sources of water. And so water is really what determines their ranging behavior during the dry season. Water more so than food. 
So they range uh, in a radiating pattern out from these water sources. And I think this is very interesting, interesting in terms of trying to understand how early hominins may have used a similar type of environment. This particular slide shows something that is very rare and unusual for chimpanzees, at least wild chimpanzees, and in that they are soaking in pools of water. So chimpanzees for a long time were considered to be hydrophobic or water fearing because of what Jen Goodall had found at Gombe. Chimpanzees at most other sites avoid water. They may cross water or wade into it to access plant foods, but at Fongoli they literally compete over access to pools of water in which they cool off in during the beginning of the rainy, the rainy season. So the beginning of the rainy season is associated with the highest heat stress at Fongoli because you have high heat and a very high humidity level. This shows competition. So an adult male, the dominant male in fact, displays and supplants or displaces subordinate males from that same pool of water that was shown in the previous image. So he drinks and then he sits in the water. So this is a particular water source that's at the edge of a plateau and the edge of a gallery forest. And so there is a lot of competition at Fongoli over water and that's something that you just don't see in most forested habitats where chimpanzees live because water is not a limiting resource. The other thing that is associated with water sources at this site are the tiny patches of gallery forest that you could see in that image behind the pool of water. And gallery forests at Fongoli make up only about 3% of the entire home range of the chimpanzees. So these are also areas that the chimpanzees can be found in during the dry season. And they provide some relief, again, from the heat. They may be associated with water, and this is also where the caves are found. So these tiny patches of gallery forest are vital to chimpanzees in a savanna landscape, even though most of their home range is grassland and woodland. This is another example of a behavior that's associated with this hot and dry environment that's not typical of chimpanzees found elsewhere. And not only are these chimpanzees soaking in that same pool of water, that they're soaking at night. And so chim chimpanzees at other sites may be active at night, but we have yet to find evidence that there are other chimpanzees in forests specifically that are as active as the chimpanzees in this particular habitat. So during the driest and the hottest months of the year, the Fongoli chimpanzees will move around and eat at night. If there are estrus females in the group, they will socialize at night, and they do so when the moon is in fuller phases. And they may spend several hours after the sun has set moving around and feeding. And then they rest more during the hottest times of the day when there's very little shade for these chimpanzees to get access to. So nocturnal behavior is just another example of how the, how the chimpanzees at Fongoli deal with these hot and dry and open habitats. So I've talked to you about some of the ways that the chimpanzees at Fongoli differ from chimpanzees elsewhere and the fact that I study their behavior and ecology to try to better inform my understanding not only of chimpanzee behavioral ecology, but also of the earliest hominins or human relatives who lived in a similar type of environment. So I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to be part of this uh, symposium, and I welcome any questions or communications that you might uh, want to send me. Thank you.